Good morning, everyone. If we could ask you all to take your seats, please. Yeah, and the family is welcome to sit anywhere. You guys can sit here if you want together, or we've got plenty of room. Sure, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. No, no problem. Yeah, that's fine. Sure, absolutely. Yes, please sit anywhere you want that there's not caution tape. We apologize. It looks like a crime scene. <laughs> but you guys are used to that by now. And yeah, the family's welcome to sit together here or off to the side here as well. So thanks everybody for coming. And it looks like we've got about a dozen that are zooming in. So welcome to them as well. Glad you guys joined us. Ray was born to Alva and Emma Tanner in Denver on December 15th, 1928, just before the start of the Great Depression, which in many ways was very foundational for Ray's entire life. His father was a farmer and worked at, and also worked at the Gates Rubber Company for 42 years. His mother was a homemaker, remember that? And, but also worked as a personal assistant, AKA Girl Friday, to Adolf Coors II in Golden. Ray grew up in Lakewood, way out in the country between Sixth Avenue and Colfax <laughs> and between Garrison and Carr on their farm. You can tell how far back that is. When he was little, he had a pet pig that followed him to and from school. He also had a favorite horse named Rex that he had had throughout high school. When he was old enough, his hand milked cow, he, he hand milked cows, fed the chickens, and plowed and cut the fields. Ray and the farm workers would load the cut hay into a horse drawn wagon, and Ray would ride on top of the hay down to the weighing scales. Their farm also had orchards that were a main supplier of cherries to the Puritan Pie Company, and later they also had numerous greenhouses for growing flowers and vegetables. Ray attended Lakewood High School, where he was a proud member of Lakewood's 1946 state championship football team as a starting lineman. After graduating high school, he attended Colorado A&M College as a pre-med student before entering the Navy, where he served in the Korean War as an aircraft carrier radar technician. Ray was home on leave from the Far East when he and his best friend from high school, Bill, also home on leave, decided to get together to catch up. Bill suggested they go on a double date, so Bill suggested Ray call this nice girl that he knew named Shirley, who had also gone to Lakewood High School, but was a couple of years behind Ray. Ray asked Shirley out, she agreed, and as you all know, the rest became history. Ray and Shirley hit it off right away as they had many things in common, and they became engaged just before Ray's ship again left for another Korean War tour of duty in the Far East. While he was gone, Shirley was teaching school and planning the wedding. Ray's ship was supposed to return home on February 1st, so Shirley picked a March 20th, 1955 wedding date. But Ray's ship got caught up in a bad Pacific Ocean typhoon on the way back home. Shirley was finishing making the first, the final wedding plans when she heard about the bad storm overseas. Ray just made it back to Denver on May the 17th, three days before the wedding. So Ray and Shirley were married on time on March 20th, 1955 in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. They honeymooned at the Colorado Springs Broadmoor Hotel to where they returned many times to celebrate their anniversary. After their honeymoon, they headed to their first home together in Bremerton, Washington at the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, where they had a wonderful time fishing, camping, 
dancing and having get-togethers with their Navy friends, many of whom they kept in touch with for the rest of Ray's life. In August 1955, Ray finished his naval service and they headed back to Denver where Ray started to look for a job. A friend said public service is hiring, so they both applied since Ray was interested in electronics from his Navy experience. He was hired on and was given responsibility for engineering many power lines, which still stand today in the quickly growing Denver area. He was later asked to become one of the first computer programmers for the company's new storm electrical outage system. Ray retired from public service in 1986 and then finished his career as a computer programmer for the United States Air Force Finance Center, where Ray and Shirley traveled together for Ray's work. After retiring for the second and last time in 1993, Ray and Shirley spent their remaining years together traveling in their RV, spending winters in Phoenix, and just enjoying life to the fullest. Shirley ended up being the love of Ray's life and his best friend for the over 57 years they were married. After Shirley passed away in 2012, Ray continued to winter in Arizona, enjoying the warmth and playing golf with his buddies. He played golf until he was over 90 and a half years old. Ray was an original member of the small Green Mountain United Methodist Church founding committee and Ray brought his brand new house in Green Mountain in September of 1962. He lived there for over 58 years up until he passed away in his beloved home at the age of 92. Ray was a man of faith and deeply loved by his family. He had four children, seven grandchildren and three great grandchildren. And in a few moments throughout this service, they will be sharing their written memories of their personal experiences with Ray. Now I'll be reading those because of COVID restrictions, but we'll be sure and tell you each of the names of, of those folks when we do that a little bit later. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, but behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of death. Because I live, you shall live also. We thank you so much for joining with us today, the folks here in person and all the people that are Zooming in. And now I see that there's, oh, about close to 20 folks that are Zooming in. Uh, we've gathered together uh, this morning to praise God and to witness to our faith together as we celebrate the life of Ray Tanner. May God search our hearts that in the pain that we feel, we may find some comfort in the gospel and in sorrow, hope, and in death, rediscover once again the Christian good news of resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord to eternal life. Um, I want to let everybody know, know that following the service, we're going to ask you please to exit out that right door. And we'll let the family go first. And then just, you know, one by one, we would ask you please to exit. And um, we're all going to go outside to the parking lot. And there, you're welcome to visit with the family and share with them your stories and so forth. I know this is difficult, especially um, because of these circumstances, but please try and keep your masks on and refrain as much you can from hugging and kissing and uh, showing the family your affection. Try just to, you know, give them fist pumps or just anything that you can to protect ourselves. I know that Ray would um, not want any of us to unwillingly uh, past the COVID virus. I, I think the best way to honor Ray would be to, you know, just keep everybody safe, all right? And during the service too, if you need to uh, use the restroom, it's right through this door and to the right, and you're welcome just to get up and, and go do that. Okay? All right, very good. And let's join together as we pray. Eternal God, we praise you this day for the great company of all of those 
who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you this morning, Lord, for those dearest to us whom we name in our hearts before you. And this day, some of us are remembering folks who just recently passed away that are still on our hearts. And perhaps there are others here that are remembering uh, past loved ones that um, died quite a long time ago, but are still very much alive in, in our hearts and in our thoughts. But especially on this day, we remember and praise you and give thanks to you for your child, Ray Tanner, whom you have now also taken to yourself. Grant peace to his soul, O oh Lord. And let the perpetual light of Jesus Christ shine upon him. And help us so to believe where we have not yet seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with Ray and all of your saints into the joy of your home, a home that you have prepared for us, not with hands, but eternal in the heavens. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, I know you don't have any hymnals. You do have the words in your bulletin, and we would ask that you just kind of hum along or very quietly sing uh, these uh, next several hymns. And we're going to start with, um, most of these are pretty old school hymns that Ray would have uh, known and loved. And the first one is in the garden. Of course, you remain seated throughout this, but um, so. <laughs> I forgot to uh, thank Melissa, our organist, for being with us today, too, and adding such a beautiful touch to the service. So thanks, Melissa, for being here. And also, I was talking with the uh, family last night, and Randy told me that 
Ray attended a uh, memorial service uh, in December. Uh, this was right before I arrived in January of 2020. It was the last service he attended here for one of our members who had passed away and the place was packed. And we just began in-person services here last Sunday, just kind of a soft opening for just a few church leaders before we reopen this Sunday for in-person. So Ray has the distinction, I think, now of not only uh, being in the sanctuary on his last occasion in which it was filled, and now today we're honoring his memory, and this sanctuary has not been this full <laughs> since that time, close to that time at least. So, um, All right, we're going to begin with uh, some memories from Randy Tanner's family. And I unapologetically, um, th these are, a, the, the first set is about two and a half pages long, and the next set um, from Mary and Scott are um, uh, about two pages long. And unapologetically, um, it's going to take a little time. So just settle in and relax and hear these wonderful memories um, from the uh, family of Ray. And they really are, they're wonderful. They're wonderful memories. Okay, this first one is from Ray's son, Randy, who says, my father was a tough rock of a man and at the same time was a soft, warm, loving family man. He and my mother were great examples of how to raise a family, especially with all the sacrifices they made over and over for their children. For me personally, I owe a lot to my dad. Thankfully, he introduced me to his love of sports. My dad and I played golf with him in Phoenix on what would be his last golf game when he was almost 91 years old. What a blessing. And his love of hunting and fishing, he was a certified hunting, hunter safety instructor and was with me when I got both my first deer and pheasant. Dad just wanted his children to do our best, which would be more than enough. He raised us all to be responsible and accountable for our lives. He and my mother also brought us up in a strong church-based home where we all learned right from wrong. We were so fortunate to have him around for so many years, especially toward the end of his life, when we talked about our family legacy. I'll miss you a lot, Dad. Thank you for everything, from teaching me how to throw a baseball or shoot a basketball, for you and your mom's family customs for holidays and birthdays, and for your unending generosity to me and my family. Say hi to mom and Mike and grandma and grandpa for me. I love you so much, Dad. Randy. Okay, I've got some Kleenex here. I think I'm, I'm already going to start using this. This is from Ray's daughter-in-law, Cindy. Dear Ray, we will typically tell our loved ones from time to time, I love you when they're still around to hear these words. But don't often or maybe never tell them thank you and how much we appreciate them. I wanna tell you all here today how much I appreciated Ray and to thank him for raising such a wonderful son, my husband Randy. Because of how you and Shirley brought him up, he is the remarkable, successful man and husband and father and grandfather that he is today. You also left a wonderful legacy in your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and I wanna thank you for that too. You gave us all a lot of wonderful memories throughout the years, and we will cherish them. When we see a bright orange hoodie, we will remember you. When we see a plaid flannel shirt, we will remember you. When we see a worn, tattered farmer's hat, we will remember you. When we cast our fishing lines at Steamboat Lake, we will remember you. When we see a furry Russian type winter cap, we will definitely remember you. When we were out on the golf, when we're out on the golf course playing the game you love so much, we will remember you. When we see a grandfather with his grandkids, we will remember you. When we see a motorhome traveling down the road, we will remember you. 
When we look at photographs of our family's get-togethers, we will remember you. When it's our birthday and there's no heartfelt birthday card from you or a call from you to sing us happy birthday, we will be sad, but we will remember you. When we gather around the Thanksgiving table and see an empty place, we will miss you. And when we sit around the Christmas tree opening gifts and see an empty chair, we will miss you. So dear Ray, you're with the Lord now. God promised that those who believe in his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will spend eternity with him. So until we meet again in paradise, we will always remember you. Love, Cindy. From Ray's granddaughter, Brittany. I will miss Grandpa's unrelenting love for his family the most. He beamed with pride whenever he introduced one of us and held on tight when he gave us hugs. I think most of us have the fondest memories of spending time at Steamboat Lake with Grandma and Grandpa. Specifically, watching Grandpa work tirelessly on his boat to get it out only for it to die in the middle of the lake. <laughs> I remember one time my mom and I were out on the fishing, uh, were out on the boat fishing with Grandpa and the propeller fell off. It was clear a storm was coming and we had to flag down a pontoon boat that towed us back to shore. Yet he still didn't give up on that boat for many years to come. That was the kind of man he was dedicated and determined. You could sense his determination each time one of us visited him at his house and asked relentlessly if he could make us something to eat even after he repeatedly being told, no thank you. His presence will be sorely missed, but I know we all take great comfort knowing that he is with the Lord, Grandma and Uncle Mike. From Ray's granddaughter, Michelle. Grandpa always made sure my belly was full. I could count on him for a sweet treat after any meal. I'll miss him always cracking jokes, his funny meal choices, like the PB and J and cheese sandwich he made for my brother, and his fishing stories, like the one when his dad made him drop down to his skivvies and jump in the water on Bridge Island at Steamboat Lake to get the line unhooked. <laughs> Every time we rode past that spot in the boat, he pointed out. I'll miss seeing him with his great grandchildren. My daughter, Olivia, adored him. My son, Maverick, was still sometimes scared and unsure, but always talked about him once he was out of his sight. Christmas Eve and with many other things won't be the same without you. The Berry family will cherish every memory we had with Grandpa Ray. We love you dearly. From Ray's great granddaughter, Olivia. Great grandpa Ray, I wish you were here. I am so lucky you were here every day until now. You were so kind and a great, great grandpa. I love you so much. Love, Olivia, your great, great granddaughter. From Ray's grandson, Dan. My grandfather was one of the biggest role models in life. He showed me how to be a hard worker, to be passionate about doing the best job you can, but he mostly showed me how to treat people. My grandpa was the kind of person who would give you the shirt off his back. If you were cold, he loved offering food or drinks to me all the time because he was trying to make me as comfortable as possible. I grew very close to him and my grandma, Shirley. When I was young, I would come over to their house once a week in the summer to mow their yard and I'd spend all day at their house talking with my grandparents. They'd ask me questions about my life and what I wanted to do when I grew up. I'd hear stories on how they met and all the fun adventures they went on together. My grandpa always told me when I was in high school to cherish that time because you only go to high school once. And to this day, I have very close friends from high school. I'm going to miss my grandfather so much he was the type of person that I'm striving every day to become. I am truly saddened over his passing, and I have a lot of grief and sorrow. But it can't all be sorrow, can it? Because what is grief? What is sorrow? If not love persevering. 
I love you, Grandpa. Love your grandson, Dan. Dan should be a preacher. <laughs> and finally, from his granddaughter, Stephanie, there are so many wonderful memories of Grandpa that it's hard for me to pick just one. One of my earlier memories is that he started calling me that kid down the street. <laughs> I don't remember why he started calling me that, but it turned into a funny running joke and I ended up loving that nickname. Grandpa was also there to watch me when I got my tonsils out when I was eight years old. In true grandpa form, after I was cleared to eat solid food, he made me scrambled eggs for breakfast and urged me to eat. Unfortunately, my wounds weren't healed enough and I started bleeding a lot from the throat and out my mouth. What a sight that probably was, but it didn't seem to phase him and he quickly got me a bucket and called my mom. <laughs> The next few days, he did proceed with caution when he made my meals, making sure they were soft enough, but that I was still well fed. When I told Grandpa I was going to Europe when I was 21, he pulled out a bunch of pictures of his and Grandma's trips around the world. He was so excited for me to go and was eager to see my almost thousand pictures when I got back. After deciding to pursue my master's degree, Grandpa was always sure to check in with me and see how classes were going and what I was learning. He valued education, and I'm happy that he supported me even when school got tough. I'm so thankful for all the times we went fishing and camping at Steamboat, golfing at different golf courses, the meals he prepared and made sure I ate enough of mac and cheese with hot dogs is one that sticks out, all the stories he told, and the laughs that we shared. I find peace in knowing he's in a better place now with Grandma and Uncle Mike. All right, our uh, next hymn is uh, definitely one that Ray would have known and loved, the old rugged cross, and we're gonna sing verses one, three, and four. <laughs> Till my trophies 
from, first of all, Ray's daughter, Mary's family, from his daughter, Mary. Dad was an incredibly caring and compassionate family man. He devoted his life to raising a family with strong Christian values and love for each other. He worked hard to provide for us, but also made sure that we had fun. Every summer, we would have different adventures, camping and fishing in the Colorado Rockies, trips along the California, Oregon, Washington coast, Mexico, and Disney World in Florida. He was a strong guiding hand in my upbringing, ensuring I was on the right track from an education and career perspective. He was my biggest cheerleader. My mom used to say I had him wrapped around my little finger, but I think it was mutual. My dad's advice and guidance never steered me wrong. I will miss our phone calls and his voice saying, hey gal, what's up with you today? But I'm happy he's with my mom and Mike and the rest of his friends and family in heaven. From Ray's son-in-law, Randy. Although you are no longer here with us, I have in my heart the love and memories of the time we shared together. The love of your family shines through your children, Mike, Randy, Mary, and Scott. I am so fortunate to be a part of this amazing, loving, caring family. My heart is full of special birthdays celebrated, holiday gatherings, vacations, camping, fishing, Hunting, only one time, that was enough. <laughs> Golfing and the most magical time of the year, Christmas. Family is important in everything. God bless your soul and we will meet again one day. Your son-in-law, Randy Peterson. From Ray's granddaughter, Wendy. Grandpa was such a caring man. No matter what age I was, he always made sure to ask about my life and how I was doing. He loved spending time with the family for simple birthday get-togethers or big camping trips to Steamboat. Growing up, Grandma and Grandpa would attend every recital, concert, soccer game, or tennis match I had. They loved to see us flourish and enjoy our passions into adulthood such as golf and fishing. I am at peace knowing he has joined grandma in heaven and is no longer in pain. Until we meet again, when? And from his grandson, Eric, what a true man of God he was and shall forever be. Grandpa embodied, reflected, and honored Christ through his unselfish and relentless service to the well being of others. Consistently, he displayed the importance of caring deeply about the well-being of others before the well-being of himself. These sacrifices he, have, he made have left a profound effect upon me and is something I will never forget. I tremble in weakness from his departure of this life, but I rejoice for I know grandpa has heard the good news, John 5 verse 24. I rejoice knowing God has saved him knowing God has clothed my sweet Grandpa Ray in his white robe of victory and has ultimately reunited him with Grandma Shirley and Uncle Mike. Praise be to God. And memories from his son Scott's family, from his son Scott. I will always miss the time I spent with my father over the years whether it was helping him more by taking care of his needs as he got older and had health problems, or just calling to chat about what was going on. We always enjoyed hearing about each other's days. 
From the time when I was small enough for him to carry me on his shoulders on walks in Green Mountain, to him taking time off from work to come and watch my high school track meets, he was always there for everyone in his family. One time he got a ticket for driving me to my soccer game too fast. I always felt bad about that. But he didn't get angry at me very too often. But when I did mess up, he let me know it so I wouldn't repeat the same mistake. One example is when I decided to ride my road bike across town to a bike shop and he had to come pick me up in a sudden blizzard. He wasn't too happy about that and he let me know it, but he would have done that for any of us. I enjoyed fishing with him in his boat in the middle of Steamboat Lake with my mom and his dog, Christy camping with the family and my grandparents for decades, mostly at Steamboat, celebrating many holidays at his house and sharing the good times as well as difficult times, like when my brother Mike and my mom passed away. He was the type of father that could give you good life advice, a place to stay when you needed it, and never hesitated to ask you over for dinner there were so many great meals we all had together at places like Dardano's, Dino's, Ramon's, the Heidelberg, the Drumstick, the Moose Hill Cantina, Ken Rhodes, Sims Landing, Wuthering Heights, and the Jefferson 440, just to name a few. We would get Burger King Whoppers on Saturdays while getting lumber to finish our basement. I never thought we would stop going to Hugh M. Woods and listening to the Kwai Paint Show on the way there, going to the dump on a gravel Rooney Road when I was really small, always seemed like an exciting excursion till we got there and it didn't smell too good. I'll never forget the time he called me at college in Boulder in 1987 and asked if I would like to join my mom, sister Mary and him on a spring break trip to Cancun, Mexico. It was an incredible vacation I'll never forget. He was a man of his faith, being a founding member of this congregation, Green Mountain United Methodist Church, and staying active in his church's Bible study group until his last Sundays. The great faith he and my mom had helped us kids to be as faithful to the Lord as we all are today. I am comforted by the fact that he's now in heaven with my mom, just in time to celebrate their 66th wedding anniversary together. Although we'll miss him, we have so many good memories. Those memories will be with us forever as we reflect on what a great father like him did for us to get us all to where we are today. From Ray's daughter-in-law, Debbie, there are many memories I will cherish of Ray over the past 20 years and most include his lavish generosity his tireless work ethic, and the fact that he knew what he wanted to do and no one could tell him any different. One of my earliest memories of Ray illustrates all these qualities. When Scott and I were dating, we went camping up at Steamboat with Ray and Shirley in their motorhome. Scott was sleeping on the table bed and I was on the pullout sofa bed, which doesn't leave much room for anything else. I was just settled down for the night when without warning, here comes Ray charging through in his pajamas, literally climbing over the top of me as I lay stunned in bed. Apparently, he needed something from the cab and my bed was the only path to get there. Scott and I quietly cracked up once Ray was safely back in his bedroom. I knew then that things would never be dull when Ray was around and they never were. He treated me like a daughter and I loved him like a father. I will dearly miss Ray. And finally, from his grandson, Colton, I've had many great memories of my grandpa over the years. I'll always remember how much he supported me in everything I did, from sports games to piano recitals, band concerts, and more. He always made sure to attend. He even once wrote me a letter of recommendation for my martial arts testing, which I'll never forget. Holiday and family gatherings were always fun when he was around. Each year he would come to our house for Halloween and have pizza with us before we went out trick or treating. He never hesitated to invite us over or ask if we needed anything when we went to his house. 
I'll always remember how great a grandfather he was. And I'll definitely miss him. Our uh, next hymn, while not uh, an old school hymn, uh, it's relatively new. It was written in 1986. And for hymns, that's relatively new. It's a beautiful hymn that uh, our congregation loves to sing uh, in, on funeral occasions like this. And it's number, uh, I'm sorry, it's called the Hymn of Promise. <laughs> In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until it seems. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing a hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until it season something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our death a resurrection, at the last a victory unrevealed until it's season something God alone can see. And now our scripture reading for this day from the gospel according to John beginning in the 14th chapter and this is Jesus now on the eve of his death talking with his disciples, his closest friends and family. And Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do shall that one do also. And greater works than these shall that one do, because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. So peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. And this is the word of God from the gospel according to John. When Jesus and his disciples sat down in their 
last evening for supper together, uh, Jesus began to explain to them that he was going to die soon, and they were obviously troubled and confused by these words. After all, they were his friends and his family. Who among us would not be as equally anxious of and, and reluctant to hear this kind of talk? And so Jesus began with this message. Do not, he said, be troubled and afraid, but trust in God and in me and follow my commandments to love one another. And in the midst of his certain death, Jesus left the ones closest to him with a very special gift. I leave you, he said, with peace. I give you my own peace, different from the peace that the world offers and understands. But this is a peace that surpasses that and all understanding. And in the midst of uncertainty and confusion, God continues to give us peace. And in the midst of fear, God still offers courage and hope. And in the midst of death, God gives us life. Ray Tanner was our family. He was your family. He was our friend. And we can be assured that when Ray passed away, he too left us with this message. Do not be afraid or troubled because I leave you with peace, the peace of Christ. And that's really saying something considering the tremendous physical and then interrelated emotional Challenges that confronted Ray in the last couple of years in particular. Ray's family was telling me last week when we were visiting together that they, that they believe Ray was in and out of the hospital, including the ER, at least if not over two dozen times since the summer of 2019. And if my math is correct, that's about a visit to the hospital every three weeks for close to two years. Now, just let that sink in for a moment. And do you know that every single time when yet another health issue would threaten Ray, he was always optimistic about a full recovery. When I arrived at Pastor here in January of 2020, one of the first persons I met was Ray Tanner, and this was just two months before COVID, so I was able to visit him at his house a couple of times. And he was in the midst both times of one of those significant health crises, but he informed me with complete confidence. And every time we spoke on the phone after COVID and he was going through yet another thing, he told me in complete confidence that, Pastor, after I get the green light from my doctor, I'm coming right back to church, so get my pew ready. Every time. Because that's the kind of guy Ray was. He was optimistic and determined. He was a can-do guy. He wasn't the kind of guy that sat around and, and, and felt sorry for himself. Um, even after his beloved wife, Shirley, passed away almost a decade ago, after a time of mourning, obviously, Ray decided that it was time to start RVing again, but this time, of course, he was, he was going to do it by himself. And so he uh, got behind the big RV, the wheel, I'm sorry, didn't get behind the RV, he got behind the wheel of the RV <laughs> and towing his car to boot. And um, he set out on the harrowing journey from Denver to Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, this became a wonderful opportunity for Ray's kids to really exercise their prayer life. <laughs> but of course, they were skilled at this, and they knew this, you know, because Ray had mentored that very thing for them all throughout his life, prayer and faith and determination and, and perhaps most of all, love. And as an original member of this congregation's founding committee, and sometime when you get a chance, not necessarily today, but you might go 
down the hall and around the corner. And you can still see the chapel, the original chapel that the church used to worship in, down the hall with the stained glass window and everything. When Ray, be, when Ray became a member, a founding member of this church, um, he remained here all his life and definitely was a man of very deep faith, sincere faith. Ray didn't just talk it, he, you know, he, he practiced it. And he was deeply loved by his family, who he also, he and Shirley also helped raise in this church. And look at what they've become today. I'm amazed when I was visiting with them that just one by one by one, they all professed a, 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 a faith, a deep faith, a sincere faith in, in, in Jesus that had been passed on to them, mentored to them by their, uh, by their father and great grand, and grandfather and great grandfather Ray. Ray was always a very personable and, and engaging fellow, always wanting to know more about you than he was concerned about you knowing more about him. And he was this way with me immediately upon my arrival here. And I knew in such a short time, but the very first thing Ray asked me before I even had a chance to ask him, is, tell me about yourself. You know, where do you come from and what do you do and what do you want? You know, all this, tell me about the church and all this stuff, you know. And that no, no doubt explains why he was still playing golf with his cadre of buddies for many, many years because Ray was a giving, loving person. Um, but here's the thing I really want you to know. And it, it speaks to the scripture that we just heard and read from John's gospel, Jesus's message, his gift to his, his family of disciples. Ray was lucid right up to the very day he died, even when he lapsed into a, a kind of a partial kind of coma, but he was still responding, his family said, to his hand being held and, and to the voices of his family and to the touch of, you know, maybe an ice cube or water to the mouth or whatever. Ray passed at home uh, following a helping um, uh, you know, not too far before that, of his beloved Rocky Road ice cream and a, a chocolate fudge shake and with his favorite classical music playing softly in the background and a little morphine to ease any pain and the loving company of his family. That's a good death. I mean, truly. We all have to die, but boy, to die like that. You know, Ray passed in peace and he left his family in and with peace. And he died a good death rather than some of the members of his own family who not all of whom did die so easy and quickly and in peace. And that, along with Ray's full and rich life, is really truly something to celebrate and to give thanks for. So whenever we Christians, um, and if there are persons of other faiths too, you're, it, it's the same with you. Whenever we gather in worship and praise of God, we are reminded of this message, the peace of Jesus Christ that really does surpass understanding. And we celebrate, especially during this Lenten season, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and, and rehearse in our own lives what it really means to live as ones who take up our own crosses and follow after him. And yet in so doing are also hopeful and, and trusting in God's power to resurrect us too. You know, to live also as those who have been promised and given a new life, an abundant, eternal life. Jesus lived and died and was resurrected for our sakes, that we too might believe in him and experience life in its everlasting glory. And so, you know, God acts through real, honest-to-goodness people, just like Ray. That's, these are the people in whom God manifests God's self. A, lives full of joy and sorrow you know, full of pain and pleasure, as well, health and dis-ease. 
But doesn't God act through those low points also, maybe even more so, our imperfections, our human limitations? These are where we especially experience God. We are accepted and loved always by God in whom we are created and have our very life and breath. And we are touched by God even in the midst of our own weakness. And so now we touch each other in God's name, given this commandment from Jesus to love one another as we have been loved, to pass the peace of Christ. So today we gather as a community of faith in an act of worship, both in person and all these folks that are on Zoom now. Holy cow, there looks like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's 20 or so of us at least. And, and we praise God this day in the midst of Ray's death. And we proclaim God as triumphant over death and truly experience this Christian message of resurrection, the good news, we call it, of Jesus Christ, and, and claim once again that peace he gives every one of us, just as he did Ray. So, Lord, we thank you that in life and in death and in life now beyond, your presence is made known to us again. We are never alone. And we give thanks to God for the time that we were graced with God's beloved child, Ray Tanner. May God continue to grace Ray's life beyond as God did his life here on earth. And may we honor Ray this day and throughout our lives by being more receptive to the establishing of the peace of Christ in our own lives. And by mentoring that and encouraging and strengthening that gift of peace to the lives of one another, our kids and grandkids and great-grandkids, our neighbors and friends, even our enemies. This is the word of God from the Gospel of John, and we give thanks to the Lord for the reading and the hearing, and, and now in raise honor, the practice of God's holy word. Almighty God, into your hands we commend your child, Ray Tanner. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Ray's body now returns from whence it came, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Blessed is he who dies in the Lord, for henceforth, says the Spirit, he rests from his labors, and all his works follow him. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Ray Tanner. Before Ray was ours, Ray is yours. And for all that he has given us to make us what we are, for that of Ray, which lives and grows in each of us, and for his life that in your love will never end. We give you thanks. As now we offer Ray back into your arms, we pray for comfort in our loneliness and strength in our weakness and courage to face our future unafraid. We would ask, Lord, that you would draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another and make us faithful to serve one another and give us to know that peace and joy which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray as we all say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our final hymn is Another old school hymn from even back to all the way back to the 19th century when we all get to heaven. <laughs> Hey! 
blessing benediction for this service is from the famous 23rd psalm once again this is the word of god that comes to us now from the hebrew scriptures the old testament the lord is my shepherd i shall not want for god makes me lie down in green pastures God leads me beside still waters. God restores my soul. God guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And as Melissa plays the post loop music, I would like to invite the family, first of all, to go ahead and go on out to the parking lot, and then we will all follow, and you're welcome to visit them there. Thank you for being here today. God bless you. Mm -hmm. 